Hello students, this is Mr. Allen. Today we're going to move on to a new chapter. We're going to look at chapter two. Chapter two is on differentiation and something called the derivative. Today's lesson is specifically on section 2.1, which is the derivative and something called the tangent line problem. Our objectives here are to find the slope of a tangent line to a curve, use the limit definition to find the derivative of a function, and understand the relationship between differentiability and continuity. Now, I just want to forewarn you that this lesson is going to be probably a little bit on the longer side um, because some of the problems take uh, quite a bit of work. But um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So if you recall back in chapter one, I mentioned that there were two big problems that um, faced mathematicians. And one was the tangent line problem. And the other one was the area under a curve problem. So those are the two primary problems that I discussed in chapter one. Here are a couple of other issues um, that were uh, facing mathematicians in the 17th century. We're gonna focus today specifically on the solution to this one. So here we have a curve, it's this black curve, and then we have this blue tangent line drawn going through two points of that curve. What I'd like you to notice is the following. I'd like you to notice that um, this particular curve, the two points of intersection are found here and here. So if I want to find the slope of that secant line, well, you would just use that slope formula that I'm sure you recall from Algebra 1. And recall that I just mentioned that these are the two points that we're going to use on this particular function in, in terms of the two points, the first one and the second one. So if we plug these values into this um, formula, we get the following. And then after some simplification, we will get the following. We will get that the slope of the secant line is found by taking f of c plus delta x minus f of c over delta x. This is the slope of a secant line. Now remember, the question we're really interested in is what's the slope of the tangent line? So how are we going to find the tangent line slope? Well, what we're going to do is imagine that we take that delta x, the difference between x and then this amount delta x, and we make that delta x go to zero. In other words, we pull those two points together. As we pull those two points together, we become the secant line, and that is exactly how we will get the um, slope of the tangent line. I should note that this, this right here and this right, in fact, all of these right here, these are all called difference quotients. You can probably figure out difference means subtract, so we're subtracting on the top and the bottom, and then quotient means divide. So here is our first important slide for the day, which is the definition of the tangent line with slope m. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this to you, but I'm going to tell you that if, the lim if this limit exists, this limit right here exists, that is the slope of the tangent line. So you know, hopefully this looks familiar. This right here, this, oh, I didn't want that to be red. Let's, let's just clear all that off. Um, this right here is that slope of the secant line we were talking about. So when we take the limit of delta x going to zero, that's going to give us the slope of the tangent line. I think it might be best for me to just um, look, for us to look at an example, but I will tell you this is a very important slide. This is something that you need to focus on. So let's say I want to find the slope of this, the function 2x minus 3 at the point 2, 1. Okay, so we could use our definition, and our definition for the slope of the secant line is m equals the limit as delta x goes to 0 of f of c plus delta x minus f of c all over delta x. This is our formula. So now we got to figure out what to plug in for these things. Now, note that c here is the x value, so that's 2. And then f of c, well, that's the y value, so that's 1. So we already know what those things are, so let's go ahead and substitute those in. So we're going to do the limit, delta x goes to 0 of f of 2 plus delta x minus 1 over delta x. So all I did is I substituted the 2 in where it needed to go and the 1 in where it needed to go. 
Now, if we plug in delta x going to zero right now, if we do direct substitution, you're going to get zero over zero, which is not good. That's an indeterminate form. So now we've got to clean this up. So the way we've got to, we've got to figure out what is this f of two plus delta x. Well, that means we got to plug this two plus delta x into this function here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that even in a different color. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to use a little bit of a mental math, so I hope you guys can bear with me. So if I plug that in, that's going to give me 2. Uh, maybe I'll just write it all the way out. 2 times 2 plus delta x, but then I'm going to do minus 3. And then don't forget, I still have this minus 1 and this delta x on the bottom. Okay, so we can clean that up some more. Let's do that all, let's do all of this in green. So this is gonna be the limit as delta x goes to zero of four plus two delta x minus four over delta x. That's gonna give us, let's see here. What is four minus four? Well, that's zero. So that's going to give us 2 delta x over delta x. Oh, and guess what happens to the delta x's now? They cancel, so we get the limit as delta x goes to 0 of 2. Well, that's just 2, so that is the slope of our tangent line, which should be no big surprise to you. If you think about it, we already know what this curve looks like. It's actually not even a curve. It's a line with slope two and y-intercept of negative three. It makes sense that the slope of the tangent line is just the slope of the curve because the curve isn't changing. It's just the slope is two, it's two everywhere. In fact, we could have done this problem for a different value of c. Here we let c be, I think it was two, but if we could have let c be 20, we would have still got the answer of two. Now, our definition of a tangent line um, isn't going to cover the case where we have vertical tangent lines because a vertical tangent line, you're, if we go back, I'm not going to go back to the slide, but if you look at the slide, it says if that limit exists. Well, if it's a vertical tangent line, that limit's not going to exist. So if F is continuous at C and this limit is equal to infinity, or if that limit is equal to negative infinity, we are gonna to refer to those as vertical tangent lines. So for example, here's a graph of a picture with a vertical tangent line. If you were to calculate the slope of the tangent line at that particular value of C, you would get infinity. Therefore, that is a vertical tangent line. We've already talked about limits at limits um, equaling infinity. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and skip this slide and get to the next important slide. This is another one that I'm going to put, put a star next to. This is the definition for the derivative of a function. So we've talked about the slope of a tangent line. What if I want to find the derivative of a function? Well, you'll notice that this formula actually looks very similar to the previous formula, except there's no c's in it. And it's got x's instead of c's. So what this is going to do is instead of giving us the slope of the tangent line at one point, it's actually going to give us the slope of the tangent line for all the points. In other words, it's gonna give us another function that gives us the slopes of the tangent lines wherever we want them. Uh, the process of finding a derivative is called differentiation. We say a function is differentiable if the derivative exists. If it doesn't exist, it's not differentiable. Okay, uh, some notation things. Here are the most common ways you will see um, their derivative written. You'll see f prime of x, y prime, dy divided by dx, and then dx, d dx of f of x. This last one, I'll be honest, I don't know that I've ever really seen it um, other than like in these notes. So this is the way you'll usually see it written in the book and on quizzes and tests, okay? All right, so let's do an example of a derivative. Let's find the derivative of this function. And get ready here, here we go. This one's kind of rough, okay? Um, because of this x cubed, that we'll, we'll handle it. Okay, we're going on nine minutes, that's okay. I told you this is gonna be long, but here we go. So if I wanna find f prime of x, this is how we write the derivative of this function. We are gonna do the limit. Uh, here's another thing I'm gonna do on this one. Instead of writing delta x, I'm going to use H. 
this is something I encourage my students to do because that delta x just seems to really be like just too much for them to always write. So if you want, instead of saying delta x, you can say h goes to zero. So now we're going to do f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now this is equivalent. This is equivalent to saying delta x. But anyways, so there's our thing. Now we already know what f of x. There, here's f of x, right? We already know what f of x is. Let me highlight that. Oops. Let's make sure we get highlight. So here's f of x. Now the hard part of this problem is finding f of x plus h. So I'm going to do that now. Let's do that in um, green. And I'm going to find f of. Oops. I want a pin here. Sorry guys. We want a pin. F of x plus h. Now just trust me when I tell you this is how you would do it. To find f of x plus h, you are going to have to take x plus h, raise it to the third, plus 2 times x plus h. So notice that all I've done is I've taken x plus h and I've plugged it into the two x variables. Now when you work this out, you are going to get the following. And this is the part where I said you just need to trust me. You're going to get x to the third plus 3 x squared h plus 3 x h squared plus h cubed plus 2 x plus 2 h. Okay, so that's what you will get when you cube that. All right. Um, I'm sure I didn't make any careless mistakes. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now we can go ahead and find our answer for our derivative. So f prime of x is going to be equal to the limit as h goes to zero. And I'm going to plug this green thing in on the top, okay? So here we go. It is x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed plus 2x plus 2h. But now I need to minus f of x. I'm going to do that in a different color. Remember, we got this minus f of x up here. So I'm going to minus x cubed minus 2x. Now notice I made that minus 2x because you've got to subtract this whole quantity. So that's why that's minus. And I'm going to leave the bottom as just h still. So yikes. Okay, so let's see if anything cancels and we'll do it in this kind of darker green here. So, oh good, looks like the negative 2x and the positive 2x will cancel. The x to the third and the negative x to the third will cancel. So that makes things a little bit better. So we got f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to zero of 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed plus 2h, all that divided by h. The good news is all of the things on the top have a factor of h in them. So one of those factors of h will be canceled. So that will give us the limit as h goes to zero of 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared, and I'm running out of room, plus 2. That's a 2 there at the very end. I'm running out of room. And now h is going to 0, right? So if h is going to 0, then that tells me, let's do it in a different color, then that tells me that that's going to have a 0 in it. So that's going to go to 0. h squared is going to go to 0. So my final answer is 3x squared plus 2. So f prime of x, the derivative of f, is 3x squared plus 2. I told you that one was a, that was a tough one. So anyways, that's the answer. OK, remember that the derivative of a function f is itself a function which can be used to find the slope of the tangent line at any of the points on the graph. So the advantage of this curve or this function or the derivative is, now you can just ask me what, what C value you want and I can tell you what the slope of the tangent line is. So if you wanted to know the slope of the tangent line at C equals one, I would just plug one in there and the answer is five. If you change your, say, oh no, no, I didn't mean one, I mean zero. What's the slope of the tangent line at zero? The answer is two. And anyway, so that's the advantage of the derivative. Okay, we're almost done here. So the following alternative limit form of derivative is useful in investigating relationships between differentiability and continuity. So here's another definition for uh, finding the derivative at a value c. 
So you'll notice that this is again a difference quotient. And I would highly encourage you to keep this one in. This isn't as important as the other two. I would say the last one's the most important, but you might see this one uh, or find it useful. Okay, note, note that the existence of a limit in its alternative form requires one-sided limits. So when we use this alternative form, so this is the alternative definition of limit, we got to do one-sided limits, okay? And they have to exist and they have to be equal. These one-sided limits are, are called the derivatives of the left and from the right respectively. This is very important in terms of figuring out if a function is differentiable on, a, on an interval. So look at the following example. So this is a function that's not very common. It's called the greatest integer function. And it's, it's basically um, the graph is there. So the greatest integer function. So if you gave me the number 1.3, what's the greatest integer that goes into 1.3? Well, it's 1. So that's why, so 1.3 would be right here. So then the Y output would be one. So the question is, is, um, for instance, the greatest integer function is not continuous at X equals zero. And so it's not differentiable. So what I'm telling you is, if the function's not, uh, if the function's not continuous, then it can't be differentiable. You can verify this by looking at the following information. I'm gonna kind of skip over this, but on the left, you're gonna get a limit of infinity, and on the right, you're gonna get a limit of zero. Those are not equal, therefore the, the limit doesn't exist, therefore the derivative doesn't exist. Here's another example. Uh, this is a graph with a sharp turn. Let's say we've got the absolute value of x minus two and you're trying to figure out if it's differentiable at x equals two. Well, okay, so here's an important idea. What's gonna be the slope of this curve on the left? Well, what's the slope of this line? It's negative one. What's the slope of the line over here? It's one. Now remember, when we talk about the slopes of those curves, those are like tangent lines, right? That's the slope of the tangent line. So if we come here to this next slide, we can look at this, it says, However, one side, so we're going to, let's do the limit on the left. Well, the limit on the left, what's the limit on the left going to be? In other words, what's the slope of the tangent line on the left going to be? What's well, going to be negative one? What's the slope of the tangent line going to be on the right? Well, that was positive one. Remember, I'm going to go back here and look. Remember, we said this slope's going to be negative one. This slope is positive one. Guess what? They're not equal. If they are not equal, then it is not differentiable at two. So if f is not differentiable at x equals 2, then the graph of f does not have a tangent line at 2, 0. All right, last thing. Differentiability implies continuity. I'm going to just tell you that this is an important theorem. However, I wouldn't worry about this unless you're shooting for a 4 or 5 on the AP exam. So this is a very, this is kind of a minutiae thing, but it is important. And here's what it says. If a function is differentiable at x equals c, then it is continuous. So differentiability implies continuity. Going back the other way, let me make an arrow come, coming back this way. This is not true. If a function is continuous, does not imply that it's differentiable. And I can show you an easy counterexample of that. We just looked at it. Would you agree that this function is continuous? I mean, it doesn't have any holes or gaps in it, but we just saw that it wasn't differentiable at two, okay? So the theorem says, if a function is differentiable, then it is continuous. I think that's it. We'll stop it there, have a great day.